It is well documented that colleges and universities need to make improvements outside of the classroom to help students succeed, especially for first generation and other student groups that do not have a history of academic success. At Northern Arizona University, faculty and staff are working on several initiatives to improve advising and other support services. One example is based on helping students who initially choose nursing as a major. We have a very prestigious nursing program here. A lot of students apply, not very many students get in. There's not a lot of seats. And what we didn't realize is we're trying to, as you might know, focus on our first year retention. And so what we didn't realize is that students who are in the nursing program and declared nursing are really showing signs after their first semester of not doing so well um, long term. And I don't think we had ever realized that before and the retention rates were really low. So now what we're doing is we're designing in collaboration with um, the college and advising is designing some courses and some conversations with students about is this really what you want to do? Um, and the way we're identifying those students is if they don't hit certain grade points after their first semester, they will be required required to take a course um, that can help walk them through some of these decision-making processes. And so, um, and to be able to explore other ways of getting into nursing, maybe it's not at NAU, or what other paths may they choose. There are several complementary initiatives based on the Integrated Planning and Advising for Student Success, or IPASS, initiative coordinated with EDUCAUSE. There are um, three big goals for, for IPASS. Um, one of them in particular for us was to really integrate our student information systems. Before IPASS, we had information in academic affairs, kept in something called electronic advising notebook. So academic advisors took notes about students there. We had information in a product called Beacon, and student affairs staff took notes there, and athletics took notes differently, and our Center for International, Inter International Education took notes differently. We're uniting all of that. When a student goes to see an advisor or a mentor or even a faculty, they don't have to tell their story over and over because the person has access to prior information. Another big part of IPASS is to have a degree planner. Um, that's something that EDUCAUSE is really interested in everyone having. And so we have implemented a degree planning program and we're really in the middle of trying to disseminate that among students, meaning encourage students to actually use it. It's there for them and we need to get them to use it. Um, and then the third is um, about academic advising. And in, in our case, we're semi-centralizing academic advising. A common theme across the initiatives was recognizing how students' experiences cross the boundaries of traditional support groups. Silos need to be broken down. One of the, the problems that we had in the past was that students' uh, issues are really multifaceted, but, but from our perspective, they were all disaggregated. They, they were, there was information kept in these different non-corresponding pockets, but the students' problem crossed all of these areas. So that made it really challenging to resolve problems for students. You could say that our retention rates were abysmal, but it was about, okay, so to really keep moving the needle and keep contributing to the state's goals for student success, as well as our institutional goals for student success, we had to really uh, become more sophisticated in how we um, serve students and how we track students, how we monitor students. I think really digging into the data and finding the students is really working. But a lot of times before we, I think we really started to use our data and, and inform that, inform us, um, we would blanket you know, oh, let's all have all students take NA 120, all study skills classes, and um, let's do this or that uh, with the class, and it's a big blanket for every first year student. Well, you know, that doesn't work, and our first year students are so varied, not even just demographically, but, you know, experience wise, everything. And so by looking at least at some similar demographics, I think that's been really successful. Um, I think utilizing peers, um, utilizing peer mentors, we, we call them coaches in our area, has been really successful, not just for the student who's in the class, but for the peer. We're creating leadership opportunities and training for those opportunities to move forward. Uh, so those things have been successful and those all trickle down to the first year students. When evaluating what has worked and not worked, the real lessons center more on people than on technology. I think my advice would be actually rooted in some things that I think that we've had a lot of support through IPASS, which is you can't communicate enough. I think 
I, I just think that's where we, we did we did really well in some cases and in other cases we, we could have done better in communicating both and what's happening, why we're doing it. Um, it's just a big institution with a lot of little hidden pockets of process and people and, and so getting to everyone was really crucial. So one of the interesting things we discovered with um, the Advising Centralization Initiative and the rollout of Salesforce in September for advising staff is we discovered there were individuals doing academic advising who we didn't know were doing academic <laughs> advising. And I know that sounds impossible, but what, what you have is situations where um, faculty or a staff whose titles are not academic advisor are actually, um, through for historical reasons or just out of a need that grew, they're doing... Um, tasks and working with students in ways we would describe as academic advising. And so what we found is that because we thought, oh, we don't need to communicate as as extensively with this population because they're not doing academic advising, we found that wasn't always true. Our assumptions were not always correct. I think I would start with, in this case, our advisors. I mean, I would look at our advisors and say, you need to have ratios that are reasonable because a lot of this should, these conversations are advising conversations. They are um, conversations that should be happening in a one-to-one -one kind of setting. Student support is crucial. And Northern Arizona University has invested in several efforts to break down silos and focus on student experiences. And the consolidation of data systems is a key part of this approach. But in the end, students still need advisors, people for one-on-one -on -one conversations, and a key role of technology is to support these interactions. In our next episode, we'll focus on some of the course-based interventions.